morning, friends. It looks sunny out, but this morning, get out. This morning we woke up to 26 degrees. So we're gonna check on our plants and make sure we didn't have any damage. Well, this isn't frost damage, but something's obviously been climbing in here and eating my lettuce. Eh, that's okay, I have more lettuce. Hey ladies! What, you think I got something for you? I'll get you a treat, hang on. All the yarrow and the kales are looking really good. And nothing's been eating these, which is hilarious because they're way more accessible to creatures. You look fantastic, red Russian kale. All my ranunculus starts and these things I've been waiting on look just fine. They're kind of sheltered under this table in the back here. And these are looking okay. They're okay. Not great, but okay. These babies out here are champs. No problem with the peas or the kohlrabi. No problem up here with the radishes or the spinach. Ooh, it's starting to really fill in. Isn't this fun? Oh, you are not gonna live there. Sorry, buddy. No grass. Oh, here's another one. And my spinach. Look at, this is right underneath a gutter. So sometimes we get weird things coming down. Squirrels, who knows? All right, these guys are okay. And these guys should be okay, unless it gets pretty, pretty cold because they're right next to the house. So even though 26 could do a little bit of damage, this bed right here with the heat right here and it's in the driveway between the two houses is pretty good. Over here, peas are good. And the kohlrabi, again, this bed's spottier, but that is okay. Looks like something might be coming in here and munching on those too. Look how close these tulip bulbs are. Ooh. It's supposed to be nice today until it starts to rain in 70 tomorrow. So I might get my first tulip bloom tomorrow. Here, my first lupine sprouts are coming up from my plant. This is the one that I've already had. I've got new ones in the basement ready to come out too. Hi guys, welcome to my garden. I would say the containers I got planted are hit and miss. That Dara looks okay. This lavender looks okay. That hollyhock is dead. So kind of okay. Ooh, but look, my clematis is starting to flower leaf not flower hi pretty girl this one's called polish spirit and it's white i'm very excited for this one this year as expected things against the fence had some protection they look all just fine and over here in the garden these actually don't look too bad either that one looks terrible i lied that one doesn't look too bad so hit and miss now our local meteorologist did say that there's a very high chance we're gonna get some more high um, hard freezes at the end of this week or early next week so he advised against putting more things out even cold hardy things which i don't know he's not always right but i am gonna not plant anything new i oh, gotta stop and get the mail mama's got a package um i am going to listen a little bit so I'm going to head in the house and I'm going to start playing with seeds instead. My package is from my gardener. It's strawberries. Okay, summer squash. Let's look and see what I got here. The first one that I'm going to grow is this one. It is a spaghetti squash variety. Macaronoa Warzowska. I don't know. It's a Polish uh, bush habitat one with two to three pound fruit. I bought this last year because I thought it would fit in my space better than a traditional spaghetti squash. We like spaghetti squash. I've done the big sprawling ones and they do good, but they take up a lot of my garden. Now these didn't work last year very good, but the plants died really early. I'm going to give them one more chance this year. And if they don't work this year, I'm going to revert back to my regular old spaghetti squash. Two other ones that I'm definitely going to do the center cut squash and the tromboncino. I did both of these last year. If you've never seen them, go back to one of my videos, maybe a September garden tour would be a good one. Um, they get crazy. They get huge. Um, and you can use both of these as, uh, as a summer squash, or you can let them stay on the vine and harden for a winter squash. Now this one is um, a hybrid. 
and this one is a heirloom. The difference is this Trombonsino is the original one. It's got, it's a longer, these can get, you can get as tall as my kids. So they can grow up to three feet long. They are more bland. They are very good for putting seasonings on. You probably wouldn't want to eat them just on their own, but what we'll do is we'll go ahead and season them really heavy and grill them and they work really good. The center cut squash is kind of a combination. It's a mix of this tromboncino and I think a butternut. I don't know if it tells me on here. I'm going to have to look it up. I think it's a butternut squash. So this one tastes better on its own. They're not quite as big as this one, but the vines are pretty long still. So both of these will need quite a bit of trellising if you want to use them. And I like both of them for different reasons. So I'm going to go ahead and grow both of these this year too. Okay, now I need to decide on a zucchini. And I have quite a few. I have kind of what the standard Black Beauty zucchini is. I got these from the library. Um, I'm probably not going to use those ones because I got all these fun ones. Same thing with this Ford Hook. This Ford Hook zucchini is a very common one. It does very well. Bush habitat. But again, I like the fun stuff. This one is the one I bought this year. It's called Nimba, and it is actually a Polish heirloom. It says it's an early, hardy zucchini, so I thought it would be good. It says great for cool, short season conditions. I thought I would get this one out and see how it did, but I'm also going to plant a backup one, and I can do Dark Star, Cocosel, or Orlano di Finza, one of the three of these. I've done this one before and it works well. I have not gotten good plants out of these ones. I've not put them in the ground. I've put them in containers and they didn't do good. So I got to pick one of these two, I think, pretty much. Cocosel. Now I think I'm going to go with the Italian heirloom. These two are both stripey. That one is plain. I want a good stripe. You know what? Maybe I'll go with both of these. Why not? Let's grow all three of those. And then I'm also going to do these eight ball zucchini squash. They're just fun. I've only got a couple seeds left. I don't know if I'd buy these again. I might. They're fun. You can stuff them. Um, and they're, they, oh, do you hear the dogs going crazy? Uh-oh. Obviously this pack has been well loved. Um, so I'm going to grow those and I guess I'll probably end up buying another seed packet. I really like those. That leaves me with yellows. I've got the Peter Pan Hybrid Summer Squash. These are the ones that my kids call little spaceships, and they're just fun. I think I've got a lot going on, so I'm probably not going to do those ones. I will do this one. This is Slick Pick Squash. This is a yellow variety from Haas Tools, and it is a hybrid. It's very prolific. I'm definitely going to do this one again this year. And these are lemon squash. And I think these are super cute and super fun. I really like the bright citrus they bring to um, a variety of squash. So what I like to do is take, you know, a couple of these. So this one, a yellow one, a stripy one, a green one, and, and harvest like one of each off a plant and, and then cut them up into rounds and make a grilled dinner. It just looks really pretty. And this lemon flavor adds a lot. So I'm probably going to grow that one too. Okay, so this is going to leave me looking like this. I'm going to have a dark green, two different kinds of striped, and a yellow zucchini summer squash, and then two small ball versions, the eight ball zucchini and the lemon squash. And then I'll have the big vining ones. I will have the center cut squash, the tromboncino, and then I will have a bush spaghetti squash out in the garden. And I think that will be plenty for me. Now let's look at my map and see where they're going to go. Okay, I saved this kind of printout of my house and I'm just copying it. So this is now my squash one. Here's my house. This is the backyard, the driveway, front porch area, down the sidewalk. I got a fence line right here in the in-ground garden. This is where I'm going to put anything that's going to go to my mom's house, which a little bit of things might, but I don't know how much of this stuff. So let's go ahead and give everything a home. First thing I'm going to do is find a home for this spaghetti squash. It's a bush habitat, so I think it's pretty much going to have to go here into the ground, in-ground garden, spaghetti squash. And then I'm going to have my two vines. 
These I like to put in this back area here. This is where the chicken coop is actually. So um, I will put maybe two plants here, a plant here. I will put a plant back here and right here. And I will have them just kind of come up and over this pergola that's right here. And they'll vine all over the top of the chicken coop, giving the chicken some shade too. And I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to do center cut here and here. Tromboncino here. And these are both going to be center cut as well. And then I'm going to put a tromboncino on the outside of the fence in the back. So this trombone scenes will kind of cover the back half here and the center cuts should be in the front in theory, but vine or vines go the way they're going to go. So we'll find out. Um, I also am going to put one trombone scene at my mom's because I want to see how many she gets. Okay. And then I'm going to go to my other four here. I'm trying to think if there's anywhere else in my yard where I'm going to put a summer squash other than in the garden. Um, and I don't really think that there is. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put buckets over here. So I've got those grow bags. And I'm going to put four grow bags over here. And I'm going to do two of the lemon. And two of the eight ball. In bags over here and then I'm gonna do two no one of each of these if one doesn't grow it doesn't grow I'll do two seeds then I'll thin one out so I'm gonna do slick pick cocazelle ortolana and the nimba and I'll probably place these in the garden kind of away from each other. Um, maybe, maybe I'll put one in each kind of corner. One, two, three, four. I don't like to put all my squash in a patch together. I like to kind of keep them separated with other kinds of vegetables around them. Even flowers. I'll probably put flowers around all these because I don't want squash bugs to come infect everything. Now, I know they're in the same garden. But when pests are kind of flying overhead and animals and insects are looking for things, it's easier to grab out a big patch of something than one plant in the middle of other things that have different scents and different looks and different leaves. So I do like to spread my things out and interplant. So if you remember, I've got a whole bunch of onions along here. That onion smell is going to be detracting. I'm putting... Uh, all of the calendula around the edge. That's going to be distracting too. It's going to help keep other pests away from eating those. So that's probably what I'll do. And then these spaghetti squash, I will probably put into the middle. Kind of like that. And I think the spaghetti squash, I might try at my mom's too. Spaghetti squash. Just because it didn't work last year, this is kind of its second chance. And I want to try it in my garden and in her garden and really give it a chance to see what happens. So those are the summer squash, and I'm probably going to put these into the ground um, maybe the 1st of May. Last week of April, 1st of May, as soon as these temperatures that are coming up seem to have faded a bit, and my 10-day forecast doesn't have any freezings, I'm going to go ahead and get those in the ground. Okay, you guys let me know which of those varieties have you tried, or which varieties do you do that you didn't see there that I should maybe try? And I wanted to show you guys this too. Look at this. This is a geranium off those ones I started from seed that I found this winter. She was making a flower in my basement. I picked her because I don't want the plant making flowers yet. But as soon as this cold snap is over, these guys got to go outside. All right, guys. Have a great day. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.